It takes everything we got. We've got to play well to win. Maker explodes. It had to be him, didn't it? The biggest thing that we do well is just fight till the end. This is why we come here. We want to win the Asia Cup. The hero of this tournament overall has been Iraqi. Everybody supports us. There's nothing like wearing the white and red jersey. The time has arrived, folks. The FIBA Asia Cup final between Lebanon and Australia here in Jakarta. We are ready to rumble. Welcome once again. I'm Jeff Taylor and joined by Mark Mills. Thank you for joining us for the big occasion. And it has been a terrific FIBA Asia Cup. Lebanon squaring off for us against Australia for the title. We just watched New Zealand win the third place game against Jordan. Jordan led pretty much for the first three quarters and then New Zealand came good late and now it's all about getting to the top of the podium and having a memory that you'll treasure for the rest of your life if you are players on these teams. Mark, there it is. It's, yeah. a, it's a career defining moment for everybody. It's been interesting to watch the players reaction to it when they came out to warm up so many of those players on the Lebanon side in particular going up to the trophy looking at it touching it wanting to get the trophy so motivated for it 35 games down one game to go this tournament has given us so much drama so much entertainment pretty much every game has kept us on the edge of the seats and I have a feeling this game might just dip us over because this is we are set for a huge one well we really watched Lebanon struggle in their semi-final against Jordan a lot of that had to do with the way Jordan played Lebanon seemed to kind of lose their their mojo this Australia team has been on a roll but it's had some uncomfortable moments even against Japan uh, when they got out big against them Japan made it a nice little run in the quarterfinals but especially against New Zealand who clawed their way back from a huge deficit to within two points late in the fourth quarter, and then Australia had to make some big shots. Yeah, and Australia, which they did. yeah, Australia haven't looked unbeatable. It's not a team that you look at and you think, how are they ever going to lose a game? There's absolutely a way they can lose this game. Lebanon will be picking apart all of that game tape, particularly the New Zealand game, to find out what those weaknesses are. Where Australia found their benefit was their veterans stepped up. Mitch McCarron in particular stepped up to the plate and said, it's all right, guys, I got us now. You've done the, the, the legwork at the start. I will take us over the top. But you look at the Lebanese team, the one thing that they have is experience. They have so many veterans in this team that have been there, done that, played so many games at the highest level that, if anything, that's the advantage that, the, that Lebanon have over Australia. Well, they have to return to that form that we saw them up to the semifinal because in the semifinal, they were not themselves. Was that a blip? Or was that the Lebanon that we're going to see tonight? We're about to find out. For now, we're going to hear the national anthems for Australia and Lebanon. We start with the anthem of Australia. anthem of Lebanon.
These types of opportunities do not come along often to be able to play for a trophy like this, the FIBA Asia Cup trophy. The FIBA Asia Cup right there for the taking. 40 hard minutes away. Both of these teams, Australia, they will come at you in waves. They're extremely difficult to play. We really like to talk about Lebanon having that high IQ uh, and coming out and shooting the basketball well, but it just wasn't that evident against Jordan. And that man right there, Yael Arachi, possibly the MVP for them if they win this. Yeah, I think he's going to be a, a huge factor in this game. You know, if the Australia are able to stop him, that's a big positive for Australia. That's a big step forward for them. But the wonderful thing is the two best teams in this tournament are in the final. Yeah, I would agree with that. So the referees for tonight, Harjit Jaladri from Indonesia on the right, Mohamed Dost from Iran on the left, and there's Young from Chinese Taipei in the middle of the crew chief. So starting five for tonight's game for Australia. Thon Maker has been sensational. William McDowell White was utterly terrific against New Zealand. Mitch McCarron as well. Sam Froling has been consistently good. Sam McDaniel, uh, probably one of the unsung heroes. But listen, Australia is so tough. Everybody coming off the bench is tough as well. Dukas Proctor, Swaka, Aquera, Pender, Vague. What a shooter Vague is. He's tough. And Clint Steindl, although he's now injured and not able to play, he's been out for a few games. And Coach Mike Kelly has uh, navigated the some uncomfortable moments, especially against New Zealand, and uh, is poised to win a trophy at the first attempt in his first run with Australia as the head coach. Ellie Shamoon, Sergio Eldarwich, Kareem Ezzedine, Wael Arakji, and Jonathan Arledge in the starting five for Lebanon. Zenoun, uh, Mansour, Ali Haidar, Hyatt. Jokchan, Mazir, and Hadidian coming off the bench for Coach El Haj. And uh, Jad El Haj, he was teetering. It was it was a real battle. And you know, it came down to the last seconds against Jordan, and Jordan missed a jump shot, or else they, this Lebanon team, would have made played in the bronze medal game or the third place game. Uh, but they survived and here they are. Well, we know the masses are watching back in Lebanon and also down under in Australia, where from the very beginning, they were talking about the gold medal vibe. It's gold medal or bust for them. They want to get the title. They expect to get it. Yeah, and that's the Australian mentality, right? In any sport, in any competition, they're coming in expecting to win the gold medal. Maybe a slight difference here. They were expected by most people to come in and be in this final and walk away, you know, with the trophy in the kit bag when they get back on the plane. So it's a slightly different pressure situation for them to deal with. The one thing that could be the issue, they do have a lot of young players in their rotation. Proctor, Floling, Oquera, Swaka, Dukas. These are all young guys, and this is their first experience of this level of competition, this level of national expectation on their shoulders. Lebanon don't quite have that problem. A lot more veterans in their team. Really, Hayat is the only player that you would consider to be a true youth player that's really going through that development phase. But Lebanon have got to make that experience pay. They've got to stay calm and composed and stick to their game plan and not be put off by some of the high flying of Maker or the strength of McCarran. They need to stick to Lebanese basketball. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Jakarta, Indonesia. The FIBA Asia Cup 2022 final is underway between Australia and Lebanon. Australia winning the opening tip. We're in the green and gold and attacking the basket to the left on your screen. And as a dean whistled for a foul as uh, Thumbmaker looked like he kind of lost his balance. Watch this. Well, that's a kind of, kind of a generous call that went the way for the Boomers. Didn't see Ezzedine do too much there. 
And the ref set the tone again early in the game, though, and saying what kind of physicality they're going to allow and what they're not. McCarron's been excellent. McDowell White really played well last time out. And you can see Maker trying to make the bounce pass. And straight away, Lebanon going to that 2 3 zone. Clearly, they are worried about the impact that Froling and Maker will have. They've been good all tournament. Karen hands it off to Maker, and he still gets in there and scores. Extremely difficult to stop. This is where Australia very difficult. They when they play man to man, they are on you. And here they are, almost forcing a turnover. Well, Darwich steps back and gets the friendly roll. Yeah, and Eldarwich is a player who's warmed up as the tournament's progressed, had his biggest game in that semi-final. 18 points against Jordan was really influential. Yeah, hit a couple of big three-pointers in that game. Very explosive off the dribble. McDaniel. Ball goes right back to him. Eli Shamoon and taps it over to Eldarwich. His pace is evident. Irakji hands it off to Arlich. Then Arlich. Arledge misses the layup. McDaniel, again a try, and the ball bounces to Arakji. Arakji reads the defense. Eli Shamoon, a high arcing shot, a little long. The pass goes off of McDaniel's hands and out of bounds. It's no real surprise to see Lebanon shoot the three early in the game. Here's the Eldarwich jumper, almost signature for him to hit some elbow jumpers. And we're going to make a rack to work. He goes up and the ball goes in and out. Eldarwich called for a foul. wonder how much gas Arakji has left in the tank. He has played a lot of minutes. He's only played in four of the five games, but across the tournament, he's third in highest number of minutes per game. I think the zone defense will certainly help on that side of things, though. Swing it around the Premier Dukas is going to be the first player off the bench for Australia to get it into Froling. And that's just poor communication. If you're in the post position on that defense, you have to talk continuously. You cannot go quiet. You have to be telling everyone what's happening on the blind side. Oh, boy. How in the world is that ball turned over? And there's McCarron. That is your, you can't not turn the ball over against Australia, and especially not at midcourt. You're just gifting them points. They're aggressive. You need to get up over the half. As a Dean from long way out. Oh, we have our first wedgie yeah, in the think, final. Have we, not, have we had uh, one in the tournament? I don't yeah, remember. I, I think we had one early on. Might have even been day one. It was so long ago. This is McCarran <laughs> on the break. It's 35 games ago, probably. <laughs> they just play at a different pace, don't they? You, and, you, and you realize it again when you see him play against a team, whether it's Japan, Lebanon, Teams that are quick don't look so quick against Australia. No, they really don't. And the pace on the defensive end is probably the most impressive. You know, they almost force you to rush when you're playing against them. Lucas comes off the three-point line. Now Reese Vague, he's one of the many sharpshooters in that Boomer's team. He was one of the players that settled the nerves in that quarterfinal against Japan. Ended up with 19 points and so much of that coming from outside. Arachi 
into Orlis Ezzedin, able to get the loose ball, then he's fouled. This is where the experience of Lebanon will start to pay, though. They're down by seven. A young team might start panicking, trying to force things a little bit too much just to get the scoreboard ticking over. We have a feeling that Lebanon know that their time will come, that they will have momentum in this game. 18-year-old Tyrese Proctor's just checked into the game for Australia. Shamoon drives in. Wow. Tom Maker with his first swat. Arledge doesn't get it off in time. Absolute interesting. dominance. I'm interested to see a replay of that one. I'm not sure if it was I on the way down. the way down as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, that was on his way down. Here it is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, we needed three slow motion replays to yeah. get that one being on its way down and to be sure. So I don't fancy the official chance to be another spot that in real time. And the ball turns over. That's a you have to uh, absorb those early punches by Australia. They throw them at everybody. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. That's the key. Absorb them. You just take them. You know at some point you're probably going to trail by maybe double digits, but it's not the end of the world. You will get options. You will get opportunities to break that down. So third team foul, or sorry, second team foul in Australia. Penders checked into the game. Number 23. He goes behind his back. And foul has been called. And it's the first time we're starting to see Lebanon being able to pick apart that Australian defense. I don't think it's a coincidence that their two front line, their two first choice bigs are on the bench right now. They're running a slightly smaller mobile five, but it's given the confidence of Lebanon to attack that paint harder. Rakshi has to do so much for this Lebanon team. The ball handling, he has to score. He has to take the difficult shots. He has to make his free throws. This guy has improved so much from the FIBA Asia Cup that was played back in 2017, which Australia won when they beat Iran in the final. It's just a little bit of zone press here from Lebanon. Not particularly intense, but just looking to slow Australia's offense down so they have less shot clock to work with in the half court. McCarron steps into a three at the top of the key and hits it. Wow. Timeout. 5.07 remaining, and Australia looking good. And this is what McCarron did in that semi-final as well, though. When his team needed him, he stepped in. He took some of the big shots. He took some of the pressure off some of the younger players' shoulders. By the way, the foul that sent Rakshi to the line, that was Reese Vague. Lebanon beat the Philippines in their first game, then New Zealand, then India, and China in a real thriller in the quarterfinals, and then of course Jordan. Now they're facing Australia, the favorites. And I like that, that one of these teams is going to finish the tournament without a defeat to their name. You know, that perfect tournament is what any coach dreams of. That's right, the battle of unbeatens here in Jakarta. That's a, a mini victory for Lebanon, you know, getting pinned to 
draw two fouls from Pinder early on, forcing a rotation change on Coach Kelly. There's the pressure on El Garwich. He's able to hold on to it. Ali Haidar, one of the more experienced Lebanese, backing his way in against. And he has really come on. He, he was shaky yesterday early, but then when he came back into the game, he was a real difference maker against Jordan. Proctor. And oh boy, how did he finish? It looked like the ball was kind of hit, and he still finished with his left hand. Off to Duke University. In just weeks. They've got a good one in Proctor. And again, Hydar, and they catch a break. Lebanon, the ball goes out of bounds off of Vague. And I see what Hydar's trying to do as you see a replay of that yeah, near impossible shot from Proctor. Even had time to apologize to the cameraman <laughs> on that baseline as he caught his camera. Oh, oh nice. Hydar. Great move, great decision, just didn't finish. And look at the hustle from the big smooth. It wasn't as smooth to say, but look oh. at Paul Maker now with his ball handling. Wani Swaki gives it back to Maker. Wow. You know, and we were having the discussion before the game. What position is Thon Maker? Take your pick, I think, yeah. would be the answer to that question. He can run the point, he can post up, he can step out and shoot. That is the uh, epitome of a modern day basketball player. Shot clock winding down, Arakji. Maker with the bounce pass, and the 19 year old Hyatt knocks it away. And I think that's a nice matchup. I think that's a, a, a good job by Coach El Haj. He should be able to minimize Proctor with his wingspan. Wani Swaka from downtown. Wow! For the Boomers, they are relentless. And that's not a huge thing we've seen from Swaka in this tournament. We haven't seen him hit tons of threes. He has got it in the locker, though. Ali Haidar this time able to scoop it up and in. And that's smart play by Haidar. These are high percentage opportunities that he's looking to create. The dump down low to Maker. And Hyatt gets over to help. Wani Swaka will it be two in a row? No, it will not. And the ball goes over to Jump Chan. One of the revelations of this tournament, really, for international basketball fans. Hyatt gets over on the baseline and misses and then goes down trying to draw the foul. Proctor over to McDowell White. Looks good, is good. It's just like a green swarm when they get out in transition like that. They spread the floor well. They know exactly where the shooters are going to be to pass to. Shot clock winding down. Odorovic has to put up a three and just it is going bad quickly for Lebanon. Von Maker, ball rattled out. Rakti, nice pump fake. Haidar should have gone up as we see a replay of the handle from Maker. A little oh. give and go, and we've become expecting that kind of thunder from Maker. He tries to hit every dunk so hard. <laughs> Don't relive, <relive's>, folks. <laughs> so Hydar will go to the free throw line. He looked a little bit annoyed. I don't know what happened after the fake with Froling. Yeah, I think he may have got caught actually by a foot or a stray hand or something just caught him in the face And I think it was just a question to say come on guys. That's a bit too much and Froling was saying it was purely accidental I think I don't make one of two 
Can this Lebanese team get some stops? And stay in this game. Because the way Australia come at you, they come at you fast and furious. And that ball chased down by Ali Masir. Chuck Chan, that's his game right there. Wow. We've seen him make a lot of big threes out of his ear. Takes it away from Mitch McCarron. Well, that's smart. Slow it down if you haven't got the transition. And they try to throw it over Froling. With some long arms. Yeah, I think Haida was just saying to him a little bit further, I'd locked him out, but you needed to throw it past me. For me to almost run onto. Hydar missed uh, the group phase with COVID, rejoined the team, and here he is getting fouled by Froling. I think the Australians would be uh, first to admit that Hydar is a nuisance right now for them. He's the one causing them issues. Well, his size definitely. Yeah, is I don't the think, issue the strength? Yeah, it's the strength, isn't it? I don't think they can match up with him on strength. You know, Froling is happy to play a little bit more of a distance game, use his wingspan to defend, but Haidar is not backing down. He's going to have to make his free throws. Yeah, he's, he's missed two or three. <laughs> so Haidar twice goes to the line and makes one of two. 12 points separate these two teams. Maker has once again had a fast start tonight. Well, four points and two rebounds, but when he's in the game, he is everywhere. There's McCarron, look at him. He could have gone all the way, but he gets it to Dukas. I wonder if he should have shot that ball, McCarron. Winding down, Jok Chan, and Jok Chan missing with the drive. The length of Reese Bay, the defense of Australia, the intensity, it's all pointing for a successful title offense. The end of one, Australia lead at 22 to 10. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A nearly perfect first quarter for Australia and you look at it they've scored 22 points they've shot the ball well particularly from outside but if I'm coach Kelly the thing I'm actually happier about is our defensive effort you know if you can limit another team to 10 points in a quarter that is wonderful defense the question is can they keep that level up for the entire rest of the game if they can then this is going to be a really big ask for Lebanon to break down a defense that is that good and that intense There's Maker making his presence felt on the defensive end. And yeah, it looks like it might have been on the way down. Australia, they won against Jordan in their first game by 18. They walked Saudi Arabia, no surprise, and then they blew out Indonesia, although Indonesia gave a good, gave a good battle for the fifth, first 15 minutes. Then came Japan, and Japan fell behind, but they battled away and ended up falling by 14. And, and even though New Zealand came, got close to Australia late, they still ended up winning that one, 85 to 76. Download the Courtside 1891 app to get your video streams, schedules, and scores as what you need in international basketball. Really good to have in your smartphone. You can scan in that barcode. It'll come up again in this broadcast. Remember, Indonesia is one of the three Jakarta, rather, is one of the three cities that will be hosting the FIBA Basketball World Cup next year. And uh, Indonesia will not be taking part because they had to get to the quarterfinals of this event. And they did not. They had to beat Australia. No, it wasn't Australia, was it? It was China. They had to beat China to get to the quarterfinals. So who knows, maybe Australia will end up here in Jakarta at the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Here's Reese Vague as the second quarter gets underway, and 
Haidar takes up the basketball. Okay, the shot clock winding down. Ohad's not happy with his offense. And Ali Haidar has to chuck up a prayer, and he brings it down, brings some rain. And I love his look. It's like, well, of course that went in. I knew that was going in. That wasn't a prayer. That was a set shot, you know, just pure confidence. He was challenging uh, Tominaga as one of the, the great sharpshooters in this tournament with that shot. McDowell White over to Thon Maker. And that was... Look at the hustle. McCarron just does not even give up on the basketball. That's incredible. The effort you know, of McCarron. Yeah, the tone is set by your veteran players, and McCarron sets the perfect tone for Australian style basketball. Ali Haidar backs up on Thon Maker and gets it to go. Well, he simply cannot afford to miss those shots. And you can just see how Haidar's turned up in this game. You know, it, it, Unbelievable. He just sat there and watched those group games from his hotel room, and he's just been chomping on the bit to get back on the floor. And you would not have known that he could make this type of potential impact watching in his first minutes in this tournament. Here's McDowell White. Well, they had those clutch three pointers against New Zealand late in the fourth quarter yesterday. And he's been more a facilitator in this tournament, second in the Asia Cup with assists, but had 15 against New Zealand. Ali Haidar! I think they're going to call travel. As Dean comes back into the game. And he's going to the bench with 11 points. That is a very, very impressive performance from Haidar. Catches the inbound pass. Ali Uf. Nope, he throws it into Maker. And of course, he goes up for the dunk. Cannot afford to turn the basketball over. Rakchi. Absolute tough drive. He's been making those shots in yeah. this tournament. You know, and I said in the pregame, if Australia can find a way to stop a Rakchi, then that is a big part of the, you know, the puzzle to get this gold medal here today. And to be fair, they kind of have. He's 0 from 3 from the field. He hasn't hit anything from the open floor. Just two free throws, two rebounds, two assists. And he's played 12 minutes. You know, he's standing on the floor right now, breathing heavily. He's about a third of the way through the minutes he'll play tonight and only has two points. Zanoon and Mesir going out. Eli Shamoon back in the game with El Darwich. Maybe El Darwich can... Uh, Help out the Cedars with his speed getting to the rim. Yeah, he did it in the semi final. He stepped up and, and took on a lot more offensively for Lebanon. Proctor back in for Australia. Look at that pass over to Froling. Wow. And McDowell White gets in for the rebound. This is where Australia <laughs> kill you if you give them second and third chances. And Proctor. And McCarron with what would have been the best assist of the tournament for me, that cross-court bullet. And then the second one was the no-look pass to the wing. That is beautiful point guard play. Oh, you could just... You can only applaud Australia because they do so well at the things that you do to win basketball games. You beat opponents to lose balls, to rebounds on both ends of the floor. You give yourself second and third chances, and you end up with wide open threes. You do, and the key to that is that McCarron knew there would be a shooter spotting up in that spot. You know, he had trust in his team that they were going to run their sets correctly. Orlich goes over to the bench, and they bring a Hydar back in. As, uh, Australia have opened, stretched their lead to 15. Here he is going right up against Pender. He has the two fouls. Look at that. Well, it creates an opportunity for Lebanon. A little runner. And Pender has picked up his third foul. And Arakji 
looks like he came down, might have hit his head on the hardwood. Yeah, either that or I don't know if he got an elbow from Pinder. And Maka, McCarron's doing a great job of calming down Pender because they know yep. there have been some technicals. And yeah, you can see why Pender is a little bit aggrieved at that call. Just <laughs> straight up. Yeah, I think and it's when his arm called. come down at the end that the call's been made on. Okay. I think the initial was right, but why did he drop his arms and drop them forward? Just didn't stay with the defense to see the whole thing through. I think he was dropping ready to spin and lock out for the box out. But I can't see this being an unsportsmanlike. They're having a look at it, though. It's not for me. Unless there's something there that we haven't seen. Watch this again. Nah, nah. <laughs> I, I don't even consider him lowering his hands. I mean, I mean he did lower his left hand and, and kind of caught Barakji, but here it is. This will this will tell you. Yeah, it did kind of get him with the elbow he following did. through. For me, it's a foul, a regulation foul. That's what yeah, that's what it was. I don't think it's any more than that, but we'll see. The officials come back out now and they'll put us out of our misery. Wow, they have called an unsportsman like. So Pender picks up his third foul. He goes out, and that makes it a lot easier than for Lebanon. Well, maybe not. Thon Maker checks back in. <laughs> yeah, do check who's coming on the floor. It's uh, out of the frying pan into the fire with this Australian roster. Just. Superstar after superstar rotating off the boomers bench. Well, Kelly looks on Pender. Also, I'm two minds about that. I, I don't think it was intentional, but he definitely got him. Mm. And Rakchi makes one of two. For me, I don't think intent is particularly the concern within an unsportsmanlike no, situation. It's, also, it's kind of was it yeah. excessive, and you know, did you kind of neglect the safety of your opposition? And uh, for me, it just didn't look like it. But the officials know better than I do. Oh, poor pass. That is incredible. You simply cannot turn the ball over. And look at that. McCarron, <laughs> you can't turn the ball over against Australia. You can't turn it over in midcourt. <laughs> and you can't just turn it over cheaply. Wow. And then you complicate it by fouling him. And look what it means to McCarron. Just goes hard to the basket, draws the foul. Gets the score, and that's the passion. Yeah. He has really enjoyed being a leader on this team. He really has. Oh, he just, oh. Oh, just hope he might be in that World Cup squad. He'd be a great fit. There's Frolin getting in, and that is not going to be an easy team to make. The I Boomers think, team that plays with the World Cup. I think he would be, because I don't think he's one of these players that needs minutes. You know, he'd quite happily be yeah. maybe a little bit lower down the rotation, potentially. He's not going to hurt you. Here's Haidar. And the ball goes out of bounds. So you're, you're absolutely right. That's a great way to put it. He's not going to hurt you. You know yeah. when he's going to come on the floor that the defense is going to be probably at the highest level out of anyone in that roster. And offensively, he can hold his own and he keeps his composure. So Lebanon went from an unsportsmanlike, you know, two free throws off the unsportsmanlike foul and then possession, a potential big swing, they get one point. That is what you call not taking advantage. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. If you're given any daylight, any glimmer of light, you have to attack it with Australia. You can't squander those almost freebies in that situation. You know, the mix of aggression, of pace, Quickness for Australia. You have to match them, or they're just gonna they're just gonna kill you. Yeah, good defense, good denying defense. Five second violation for McCarran. And this is the one thing you will definitely get for Lebanon. They may trail by 16 right now, but they will fight for the 40 minutes. Oh, wow. Oh. 
Oh, what a block by Fawn Maker. And now Quare on the break. Proctor. Not this time. Fawn Maker just isn't going to allow Lebanon to play, is what, what it pulls down all to. All I have to say is what a party pooper. He, he ruined what was a wonderful play for Lebanon. He spoiled that. That was going into the highlight reel for sure. <laughs> well, it will go in for his block. Yeah, it's true. His name will be at the bottom of the screen instead. <laughs> There's Haidar, and this time uses his body better. Well, you need to see some Lebanon pride here. Because in a way, that that's Australia are not short of pride the way they're playing tonight. Aquera. And Aquera, who doesn't really even get that many minutes at this FIBA Asia Cup, comes in and hits a shot from the baseline. And some of what, you know, so much of what Australia's offense is, is off that same play. Just a high pick and roll, spreading the floor, penetration, kick to shooters. Almost every time that's what's spurring their offense. Ali Mansour picks it up. Now, oh, boy's in trouble. He can't get rid of it. El Darwich, look at Dukas, gets in his way. And somehow he does get the shot off and doesn't hit anything. They're not allowing him to breathe. They're suffocating him. This is a really good looking Australian performance. They don't want to leave anything to chance tonight. Australia are, they've got a stranglehold on this one right now. 34 to 18, timeout Lebanon. timeout really from coach El Haj there it wasn't anything specific that he was talking about he was just trying to run through what the expectations are what the standards are that Lebanon have set themselves within this tournament and they've stuck to you know they struggled in the semi-final but they rode that one out and got the win well, pretty much on the buzz of well within the last 10 seconds but they need a big performance and they need to change something you know if they stay with the status quo in this game then Australia will just walk towards this gold medal, they have to switch something up. Here's Proctor, again into the corner, over to McDowell White this time on the wing. Oh, Darwich, just kind of standing around. Ali Haidar surrounded into the corner. Iraqi for three. And he is. This Lebanon team just looking for anything to go right. And the dump off to Aquera. He's fouled. Just jumping back to Lebanon's offense then. The spacing was atrocious. They did not create any gaps as you see Aquera staying with it as well. Almost got the shot away and got a score. But for Lebanon, they need to spread the floor. That's where Australia have been key. You don't have to constantly be moving, but you have to make sure that you're making the defense work. If they don't have that space, it's easy to defend. Free throw shooting for Australia has not been the best in the tournament. It's been the only thing that's been an easy criticism. This Australian team, without going into depth and detail and being really analytical, the easiest thing to pick out the box score is that Australia have been awful from the free throw line. 60% before today's game. Ali Haidar spins, Perth puts it up and in, went right at Reef Bay. After two missed free throws, so a four-point swing, and they get it back to 14 points, the deficit. Look 
Look at Proctor. That was a left-handed pass to Aquera, and his pump fake, and he just gets in, and scores easy. Better spacing, better spacing. Mansoor into, oh, nice play. They stuck with it, and finally, as you said, with the better spacing, they get a layup. Just means you make the defense have to work harder. They can't help so easily. Aquera, and there is Alan Mazier coming up with a rare steal, or Mansoor, rather, gives it back to El Norwich, and that's a crowd pleaser. I think if Lebanon get another score, you'll see Australia call a timeout. And so his defense causing some problems. Aquera, though, for three, and here's Mansour. Small lineup for Lebanon. Here's Chuck Chan out to Arakchi for three. Got it! Look out! Lebanon! Rising from the dead. All of a sudden, it's a nine-point game. Man, Coach Kelly won't be happy seeing how wide open Arachi was. Great find by Gyokchak, and Arachi does what Arachi does, just drains that three. And it's not to have a go at Aquera, but the two missed free throws. Yeah. Lebanon go down and score. Absolutely. All and of a sudden, they go on a, what, a 7-0 seven, seven run? And Coach Kelly will take a learning from that. He's played a very young five. He may need some more experience on the floor. Yellows, yes. Yellows, straight up, is that what he said? Yeah. Straight up in the post. Keep building, build, building on everything we've done so far. Offensively, we're horn stagger here. Horn stagger. We're getting great shots still, Biggs. Keep diving on that thing, okay? Set that thing. If you see him showing, you're out. And you may have it right there. Good space. That was the play with the spacing. And then, of course, instead of Australia getting the steal, it's Lebanon. And look at Mansoor with a little showtime over the shoulder pass back to El Darwich. And what does Coach Kelly do now? Straight back to his starting five. You know, within 10 points, nine point deficit now. Needs to go back to that stability, go back to that first string and try and extend the lead out before the halftime break. Quick pass to Froling into Thon Maker. And it just doesn't matter when he's on the game, he's pretty much unstoppable. Look at those numbers. Four of five. I mean, he's just dunking. I was going to say, is that way. his dunk numbers? Is that just yeah. purely his flush? That's his dunking percentage. <laughs> A new column in the box score just for Maker. Oh, boy. Tough play by Lebanon. And both McDaniel and El Dorwich running at full throttle towards yeah, the he's baseline. Holding, he's holding his left ankle. That's a big worry for Lebanon if he's done something there. Ooh. Yeah, it looked like an awkward landing, didn't it? I don't know if he flipped it, but that's the flash from Mika. And he's having his own highlight reel for today's game. Okay, that's for sure. This is not good. As you look at, again, the maker out of your screen, El Darwich having to limp out of the game. Yeah, that would be a big loss if he isn't able to come back in. El Darwich has grown in this tournament, taking on more and more responsibility for Lebanon. So, Shamoon comes back into the game. Eli Shamoon. I like Mansour's defense. He's brought a different element to the game for Lebanon. He's on the ball there. Now into the corner, McDaniel. Over to Froling. Shot clock winding down. And McCarron loses it. Eli Shamoon. He's trailing. Gets it back to Mansour. Quick pass, Arakchi. Well, he runs off the three-point line, and Maker just seems like anything within 10 feet of him, he's going to get. 
<laughs> he thought about throwing the lob. You wanted him to throw the lob. Yeah, I thought McCarron was going to look for the lob. Maker was up for it, but McCarron says, no, nah, I think we need to be a bit more sensible right now. Sean Maker. Lebanon have time for one shot. Jock Chan goes around. Ooh. And he does a great job of getting in. Now he kind of hurts his left side. Almost just bent like double then, doesn't he? The weight of a uh, maker landing on top of him, I think. Well, like I said, kind of jerked back. Born in Armenia, Jock Chan. Karen needs to be a little bit careful bringing his arms forward and down like that. So Rakshi goes out. 3.1 seconds to go. Chokchan was born in Armenia. Father coached in Lebanon, moved here. And this is just, for a Lebanese fan, you're like, what could go wrong next if a guy like Chokchan is missing free throws? Yeah, they're 75% as a team. It's his first trip to the free throw line, but they've only been hitting 56% today. And Lebanon knew coming into this game, and they still do, that they have to be near perfect. They need to take advantage of every opportunity. He's going to have to hurl it. Can he go in? Oh, almost. Good effort by McCarron. Somehow, some way, Lebanon have battled back. Australia lead it 38 to 28, though, at halftime. Yeah, and it's a low scoring game that Australia would have wanted. They want to just slow down that Lebanese offense. They've been averaging 95 points a game. At this rate, they're going to be less than 60. Here's the shooting percentage. Australia shooting the three ball really well. Six from 18 from outside. Their free throw woes continue yet to hit one of their first three attempts. But Australia will be happy. Winning the rebounding battle. 11 assists for their 38 points. Not a huge number of steals, which will be a bit of a surprise for Australia. They put a fair bit of on-ball pressure, but leading scorer, Aida leading all scorers with 15 over half of Lebanon's points. And that tells you a lot. Maker is a leading scorer for Australia, and he only has eight. And you have to give a huge amount of credit to Australia. For me, it's all about the Australian defense. That has been the absolute killer for Lebanon. They've looked so fluid offensively, as we'll see plenty of highlights of Australian offense as well. And a series of throwdowns for Fon Maker. And he's certainly enjoying the game. But for Lebanon, it's at the offensive end that the worry is. I think they'll be happy that they've kept Australia to 38. That's not a huge concern for them. But the fact they've only scored 28 in the first half is a, a bit of a terrifying statistic for them to deal with, particularly when you look at their leading scorer, Wael Arakji. Played 19 and a half minutes in that first half, only has six points, three rebounds, two assists. They need to get him firing up in the second half if they're going to have any chance of getting back into this game. For me, Arakji is the one player that can break through, score points in a hurry, and get them back in contention of the gold medal. How do you contend with Thon Maker, though? I mean, <laughs> it, you know, he, he's, you know, you've got Ezra Dean. The best big has been Ali Haidar, really. Yep. Uh, yeah. Arledge yeah. has been a non-factor. I think Arledge, I'd almost reset him and say, you're going to be the defensive stopper on Maker. I think Arledge, realistically, physically, is the only player that will match up with Maker and be able to stay with him. How do you do it? You could go to a zone, potentially just block the paint up. Thon Maker is better inside than he is out. He's not had a great shooting performance today. But then you bring in the rest of the Australian firing squad with shooters galore on that bench. And Thon Maker doesn't need to score anymore. You know, those kind of plays, the zone defense should lock that out and shouldn't enable him to, to drive and cut the baseline so easily without being body checked on his way to the bucket. But it's not an easy task. You know, you have to pick your poison. 
Do you let Thon Maker have more space inside, but you can defend the outside more? Or do you give up loads of space for the three? 38-28, Australia on top of Lebanon at halftime in the final of the FIBA Asia Cup. Who will you become when the moment arrives and you're carrying the expectations of an entire nation, representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands? It's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all. Explodes! And that was only a matter of time. He scored the last five points now for Australia. Look, they gotta hurry. Gonna they gotta three. get the three. Goo gets blocked. El Darwich has the basketball. Lebanon has shot China. Unbelievable. Arachi goes around the back and puts it up and in. Well, New Zealand beat the tenth to less than time going. No, he's going to go in. Oh, he does it. Goodness me. What has Glenn Cameron not done at this FIBA Asia Cup? Araxi got it. Here he goes again. Araxi. But then he turns it up. No, almost. Yes, he does indeed. And now they pass it up. Here comes Abu Hawaz. Oh, he gets blocked by Ali What a sensational swat. Just two points the advantage. Arledge gets swatted by Joe T. What a tremendous block that was by Joe T. The hero of this tournament overall has been Araki. Here he goes. Puts it up and in. Jordan still has time. With 11.8 seconds remaining. Coming up on the one minute mark here. And now Barrett goes in, and boy, does he put the Saudi on the poster. You oh. feel kind of bad for Al Hausawi. Oh, he'll be a bit naive. He'll be having nightmares for weeks on that one. I guess that's not to pick up a third foul. Freddy. Oh, oh, he was going in for a dunk. That's great defense leading to fast break offense. Point games at a boss. It might be a three anyway. Abraham! Oh! I don't believe you it. are kidding! You cannot believe it! It is stunning! Stunning saves at the card up! Freddie Abraham! Steady Freddie! has finally stood up to be counted! They have knocked Chinese Tape out! Incredible! Australia on top by 10 points at halftime, and a big reason why is the play of Thon Maker, who is uh, wreaking havoc on both ends of the floor, especially here as, well, that's quite possibly the, the softest of shots of tonight, because he's <laughs> usually just throwing it down in anger.
Watch this. He gets it back, and you know what's going to happen. Yeah, he's been a he's a handful. That's for sure, Con Maker. And it's not just the points, three defensive rebounds. You know, he's already uh, sorry four defensive rebounds and two block shots. He has looked impressive, both defensively and offensively. And for me, he's the biggest difference between these two teams right now. Well, who would have thought this would be the case? And it's not just that he's leading him in scoring, he's got 15 points. So, Ali Haidar, it's all about experience, size. Okay, he's hitting that three-pointer. He's hit some three-pointers in his career. That was uh, not really in the playbook, but at the end of the day, He's given them a chance with his performance. For me, it's, it's not even about the physical or the technical or anything. It's just hard. He's yeah. the player that's turned up and said, I want this game. I want that medal. I'm going after the top spot on the podium. You know, that's clearly he's approached that game. He's tried to drag some of his teammates along with him. I'm not sure they're quite at that, that kind of mindset just yet. If they can get close, expect to see several players Trying to get up to the level that Haidar's been at, where it's just pure desire that's driven him. You will set screens for Hyde. When Hyde is the first one, Ali, you are here. So first guy will go, second guy will turn, give me Hyde, and again seal. Always spread the four men out and seal on the five men. Take care if they trap, quick guards, and show up. Transition defense, guys. Transition defense. And only five fouls in 20 minutes. I love, I love the exchange. I love the comment as we see Lebanon breaking their huddle. 
by Mike Kelly saying it's like Proctor said. Yes, absolutely. If we run, they're not, they can't keep up with us. And Proc is 18 years old. That's great coaching. Download the FIBA Asia Cup app in your smartphone. What a fantastic app, folks. Phenomenal. Get it there. Yep. We use it every day. We do. A lot. 20 times a day. And pretty much, if not more. But it's interesting that both sides, you listen to the coaching staff, they're saying the same thing. You've got Coach Kelly who's saying, we are a pace team, we have to get out and run. And at the other end, Coach El Hash saying, transition defense. He knows what's coming. But can he do anything about it? He can see the tidal wave in the distance, this green swarm just coming his way. But and can Lebanon run with them? Can they stop them? You know how addictive it is that the pace is the issue here? Lebanon start essentially a three-guard lineup. That is the only way they can keep up with Australia. They're starting Ali Mansour, Sergio El Darwitz, and Yael Arakchi. Even then, I think they're, they're, their lineup's too big. I think they need uh, Ezzedine or Ali Jim probably instead of Gyokchan at this point because Gyokchan's not going to run transition defense. Haidar will work as hard as he can, but he's not the most mobile player. And then you look who they're going against. Froling loves to get out and run. Von Maker, find me a player that doesn't love transition offense more than Von Maker. I still think that this Lebanese five isn't built to deal with that intense pressure. Second half action underway. And here comes Lebanon, a little runner, not there, and Maker comes out for the big rebound. If you're Lebanon, you want to get, you want to cut into this deficit immediately. You don't want this uh, lead to grow. And you know that Maker is just itching to get some, get some looks down low. McCarron for three, good. Wow. Maka, attacker. And I think the reaction from the crowd summed that one up perfectly. Just almost a, oh, a sigh of just, yeah, amazement of the quality. Chalk Chan, somebody's got to make some shots. Chalk clock about to expire. Ali Haidar puts it up. So two trips already, no points. William McDowell White goes in and scores. And that's what I was talking about. And interestingly enough, it wasn't the front court players that struggled to play transition defense. It was the back court players that just didn't bother. <laughs> in that situation, that's what Coach El Hadj was asking for. You have to run transition D. Ali Haidar. Wow. <laughs> And you wonder how much of this performance is based on the fact that potentially this could be his last Asia Cup. 31 years old, potentially 35. It's not too old. He's certainly in good shape. Now the ball goes off of Maker, and now a chance to run for Lebanon. Quick pass. Lebanon do look a little tired to be honest, or certainly Arakchi doesn't look to have the same spring in his step that he had earlier in the competition. Oh boy. Trying to get the ball to Jack Chan. McCarron on the break and doesn't get the drop and another chance for Lebanon. Remember both of these teams played yesterday. Arakchi drives in and that's probably his best move of the game, Yael Arakchi. If he can summon his strength for one. Oh, look at those quick hands. I'll tell you, Mansoor does things for this Lebanon team that nobody else is doing tonight. He's actually a pest. We've seen him get a steal. This was Arakji. Maker's going to come out. Reese Vague is going to come in. That was the three pointer from Maka. Reese Vague, you know that's automatic. Nope. And jump ball. Possession arrow favors Australia.
McCarron came down out of bounds. But they had it tied up and they called the jump ball. That's what Lebanon were arguing anyway. And good job, Hydar, knocking the ball out of his hands. And it'll be Australia possession 2.3 on the shot clock. Proctor's going to come in. And Daniel goes out. Pender with his three fouls is coming in for Froling. And this rotation will be key for Australia. You know, talking about the semi finals yesterday, the only two players that played about 30 minutes from McCarran for Australia and Arachi. Yeah, and they get it to Pender, but he misses. And, and now it triggers a break for Arachi, and he's going to hold up. Well, they, they got away with one there, Lebanon. And two shots, and that's the fourth foul on Pender. I think he'll be heading straight back to the bench. But the point I was making that Arachi and McCarron played 32 minutes in those semi finals, but McCarron has played five less minutes in this game. You know, and it's that management of the rotation. And don't get me wrong, it's easier for Coach Kelly to do that. He has depth on his bench um, at a level that maybe Coach El Hajj doesn't have, but that will start to play its part as well. Oh boy, Arachi missing the free throw. Been a tough night at the line for this uh, Lebanon team. For Arachi, outside of the final quarter in that semi final, he didn't look like the same player. Yeah. He really didn't. He looked tired. He didn't look engaged and fully focused on the game. 6 of 12 at the line tonight as a team. Can't afford to miss free throws against Australia. Proctor to Reese Vague. And Vague misses. The jump was missed time by Pender. And now chance for Eldaro to bounce pass. And Mr. Reliable, Ali Haidar. Back to a nine point lead for Australia. And McCarran. Oh boy, the ball didn't drop. Nice move. Chuck Chan has a size advantage. Look at that. McCarran just takes it away. Doesn't matter that he's smaller. And Pender with the lob. Australia got away with one there because they get the basketball back. And McCarran drives in and he misses. And Australia in a little bit of a rush. Look at that. Not giving away anything cheaply. Australia letting him come up the court. But Australia has missed a couple of opportunities. And here is oh, blocked. But then puts it back up. And <laughs> how do you describe? I'm not quite sure what I'm watching here. <laughs> Both teams at the rim. El Darwitz getting blocked by the underside of the backboard right here. He's under such pressure, he can't relax to put it up. And as much as this is just not attractive basketball from either side, it plays to the hands of Lebanon right now. I think this scrappier, stuttery, less fluid style and tempo of game will help Lebanon back into this game. It's fragmented, it's broken, and that's not what Australia want. They want structure and discipline. Well, Tom Maker back in the game. As it in goes up, he gets blocked by Pender. Wow, that this is a big block. Absolutely. Oh, and that's an unsportsman life. That's well, a Darwin's horrible got foul. Ronnie Swaka who gets up and takes exception and really he should that's a horrible foul yeah there's no place for that on the floor I just hope that was accidentally kind didn't realize that Swacker was going to explode to the basket oh, that's horrible you just got to let him go doesn't he because he kind of pulled on him at the end. Either that or you just swing on his arm. You know, you slap his arm rather than around the neck. And that is Pender with four fouls going up for the rejection. For me, that's the best block of the tournament. I'm putting that one up there now. That okay. is a tough block. He is, you know, Ezzedine's going up with everything he's got. And Pender met him at the ring and just said, no, I'm afraid not. Not today. So Wani Swaka goes to the line. 
And calmly sinks the free throw to take it back to a 10 point advantage. And again, I like what the team did. So Swaka bounced back up, understandably angry, yeah. wanted to confront that situation. His team huddled him, brought him back down, got him level. And what's the result of that? Two made free throws from the free throw line. Yeah. You know, that is the top level of performance if you have a team that's able to do that. Now Darwich goes out. Proctor, three point range. Could have been a worse trip for Lebanon, that's for sure. Oh, nice pass, but Ezzedine didn't appear to be ready for it. And now Maka on the break, oh, the behind the back pass. And the foul. And I'm feeling for McCarron right now. He's throwing some unbelievable passes, but his teammates just aren't quite getting the finish. To be fair to Maker, he got fouled hard there, but look at that. No look behind the back. He's bringing all of the tricks out of his locker. And I like the change of bringing Hayat into the game. He needs to be on the floor for me. I think his energy, his athleticism matches up well against Australia. I think he's going to provide much more defense than uh, a five without him on the forward. And Maker just goes up, gets the rebound, and Pender gets it. And the ball hit out of bounds, and even on the misses, it just becomes an impossible task against Australia. You just can't keep them off the glass. On <laughs> Maker for three, that's off. So it's definitely not been is efficient I haven't executed as well offensively here in this third quarter and Rakji just uh, wasn't missing that shot earlier in the tournament of course he knew that Thon Maker was there McCarron that's a short I mean, Australia have left the door open for Lebanon. Yeah, they have. Lebanon have the opportunity, but they're making mistakes like that themselves. And look at McCarran. Just, it all starts with defense, intensity, determination. I'm not going to be denied. Look at it. Great example. Yeah, he truly is. And as I said, he stepped up in the big games. He stepped up in the games that matter at 13.7 assists in the semi-final against New Zealand. You look at his numbers today, he's now up to 12 points, four rebounds, three assists. Doing it all at the moment for Australia. McCarron has looked good in today's game. He's taking his leadership role seriously. Captain of the team and he'll get a seat on the bench now, but I don't think he'll be sitting down for long. I think Coach Kelly learned from the first half that Australia look a lot more composed when he's on the floor. Well, one thing's for sure, you cannot turn the ball over against Australia. It's already hard enough. Somehow they maintain possession there. Ezzedine opens, so he takes the three. Ali Haidar competes, goes up, and 
Well, he's becoming a real Lebanese hero tonight, isn't he? Yeah, 21 points now. This is unreal. There's no way anyone would have forecast this kind of performance from Haidar. Thon Maker. Wow. And Haidar has gotten injured. Something's happened. Might just be exhaustion or stitch, you know, he's put so much into this game. Well, he, he said today he was really struggling with tiredness. And having just uh, come back from COVID, which kept him out for the early part of the tournament. The thing you've got is ideally Coach El Haj will want to take him out of the game. But, but they can't afford to because they're, they're just not competitive without him. But rest him for what? <laughs> the medal ceremony? <laughs> well, they get it to Hyatt and he puts it up and in. That's smart. I like that from Coach El Haj. Is it a timeout or is it just a sub? Let's see. Oh, I thought it was a timeout. If I'm Coach El Haj, I'm thinking about a timeout now. It's already called one actually in the second half, so maybe not. He needs to space them out to give some breathers in the fourth quarter. I think they're looking at the clock to make sure that that's correct right now. So Lebanon came in here without a loss, but they did have a couple of scares. They barely beat China and they barely beat Jordan. Australia had a close game against New Zealand and Japan battled them well, battled them hard. Uh, but this Australia team is uh, their first five is just or say their first seven players. There's just no drop off. They play fast, strong, aggressive. And for me, that's the key to, to great teams. They have an identity. So yeah. outside of the 12 players that have got jerseys on, there's an Australian way of playing basketball. So once you are one of those 12, you play that way. And that's, that's such a strength for any national team to have because no matter who's in your rotation, how you move players, they know what the expectations are. They know what they've got to bring to the floor in every game. You know, no matter what Australian 12 are selected, so they're not going to count Hyatt's basket because of a clock issue. They've gone back. Oh, wow. It's already hard enough to score. <laughs> they're going to take away a basket. Oh, wow. I'm not on that. I'm sure it's uh, to the letter of the law, but maybe not the spirit of the game so much. So is that right? Is that a 14 point game? Yeah, so it is 14. So that would have cut it to 12. So a tough break for Lebanon, but yeah. it probably had the benefit of a call or two in this game as well. This thing's even out. Arakshi. And that's the YL Arakshi that. Yeah. He has to be to but have a chance, and that's the, the wild reaction that he's been in this for most of this FIBA Asia Cup. Pretty much, he has to be perfect now. He has to step up and become that superstar that we've seen throughout the tournament. But a little side note, Swaka put his hand up to say, I'm sorry, that was bad defense. And for some reason, they haven't put the points on the scoreboard, and the crowd's reacting. Yeah, the officials tables are aware of it. The assistant coach needs to be careful so, for Lebanon right now. He's getting a little bit too already, carried away. They've already had one basket taken away and they haven't put up a Raktu's three. And there must be like a key that's stuck. So ultimately the scoreboard is in irrelevance. It's the scorebook that counts. Yeah. 
You know, the scoreboard is just a, a symbol out that we know what the score is. It's very clear we know what the score is. They're not waving away the basket. They just, they're having a technical yeah. issue here. That's all it I is. wonder who this benefits, if anybody. Uh, it benefits Australia. For me, absolutely benefits Australia. Arakji just hit a three, starting to get into some, you know, to some heat, wants yeah. to get flowing. He's your main man. And then they're going to get a, an extra timeout. The only thing it might help is Haidar to sit down and breathe as hard as he can right now. But Harachi, that man there, has to have a perfect 12 minutes and 29 seconds if Lebanon are going to come back into this. He struggled in the opening stages. That took him to 11 points, though, but he's going to need to probably put another 15 on in that final quarter at least. You know, you got, you know, you want all the domestic leagues all over the world to be strong, and you need the stars to be in those leagues, but yeah. you can see how players would benefit if they go down and play down under if they can latch on with some of those teams. Yeah, the NBL in Australia is becoming NBL or not, very maybe even strong. some of the other, you know, the second division. Club, so. Yeah, yeah, NBL one as well. It sits below it. It's becoming more and more competitive. You're seeing a lot of uh, rookies coming out of the NCAA program and going into NBL one if they can't find I mean, have you a top tier team. Well, let's not forget South Sudan are now the new sensations of Africa, <laughs> and they have a lot of players in Australia. Yeah, they do. They truly what is do. it they're doing right down under? Um, they've got their whole structure in place the, it, from from top to bottom. The way that they. Uh, embrace young talent the way they develop young talent it's ingrained just into their culture more than anything across all sports but basketball now is seeing that and why has it progressed so recently for me it is that top tier it is the nba in the last 10 years it has become one of the the most professionally run uh, leagues in the world i think it's the second or third highest attended league in the world you know they put in player welfare situations minimum wages you know they've got a great structure that is enabling young Australians to aspire to be professional basketball players. Well, and they know there's a career there, and that's why you're seeing this talent. Sochi improved for China by going down. Yeah. Bye bye of Japan. Yeah, yeah. So, there's a lot of players. I mean, yeah, you want them to play in their, in their own countries, but sometimes it helps players if they move abroad. And Australia, it's not just the US, but Australia, some European spots as well. Mm -hmm. and, Tom Maker misses his first. They did add the points on the board. The one thing that has helped, I think, is the fact that now every neutral that's in the stands doesn't like Australia for some reason. They're taking their frustrations out wow. the Australian players. That that just is symptomatic of everything tonight. They don't get the offensive rebound, or excuse me, the defensive rebound. Okay, they escaped this time. Simply cannot allow the boomers to get those boards. And you can't turn it over here if you're high it, and you do. And look at that. Tom Baker got rid of it quickly. Just a disaster of mid-court. Look at that. And that's cost high at his spot on the floor. A couple of mistakes. And you're right, you can't make those mistakes out of all the teams in this Asia Cup. It's the boomers that will punish you most. And look at Arakti. Almost had a chance for a three-point play. And you feel like Haidar has held the game together, and it's now for Arakti to take over and try and push his team over the top. The thing, the thing is, in Hayat's favor, and then, you know, in his uh, in lieu of his latest turnover, the guy that replaced him, El Darwich, or no, it's El Mazer that came in. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So I was going to say El Darwich has done the same thing. I mean, it's not like he's the only Lebanese player that's oh, turned no. it over at mid-court. No, no, no. And it's not just you that's doing that. Australia run defense, you know, intensity that, that forces that. There are unforced errors that, that Lebanon have made, but they've also been pushed into those mistakes. Mike Kelly's Australia up by 11 points. It's been a great tournament for them. Can they close this victory out? There's Dukas. And missing, and the basketball, look at that. Australia just do not give up on it. And they're going to, Jaladri and Young are going to talk this over. Are you sure the ball went off? And I think the Chinese Taipei official is saying he saw it go off his shoulder. It's going to be Lebanese basketball. 
Nope, it's going to be Australia basketball. You just got to give them credit. They don't give up on the ball. They do not give up on the basketball. Just Hydart chasing Maker. And now the, the crowd is indeed pulling for Lebanon. Chani defense, Dukas from the right corner. Yeah, he's just a college player. <laughs> he's just a college player. All he's doing is hitting huge shots. And Dukas is doing the right thing. You know, lean to your strengths. Spotting up, spot up. Just make sure you're spacing and you're spotting up, ready to catch and shoot. Oh, and Hydar's just running out of steam right now. Yeah. You could say that Dukas is the most improved player for Australia in this tournament. Oh, that's for sure. I think Madcow White might be there for me, you know. Uh, he's grown into this tournament. Yeah. He was pretty solid at the beginning, though. He was solid. He was absolutely solid, but he's turned into a star, particularly in that semi final. But isn't that a nice argument to have? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which of your players has, has improved the most? Not which of your players is disappointed the most or anything like that. It's uh, a lovely headache for Coach Kelly. You could even throw Pinder in there. Yeah, potentially. Although he's had a bit of a tough one today. And it goes. There's a deal. Oh, I can't get it to go. everything into this but looking at that last play he looked like he was running through treacle he, he really does he looks like he's got very heavy legs right now if i'm coach el Haj, i'm probably taking him out for this minute so he can get an extra little break yeah, across the three-quarter break I agree. you just got to do something for him right now as he gets to drop get a message over coach <laughs> sit ali down just give him uh, an extra minute on the bench to to catch himself To big smooth fades oh, right on cue, and he has been one of the stars of this tournament. He's been very quiet today, just his second bucket in the night. High dog turns, and now Australia with the last shot up 14. And Ali Haidar forces the scramble right at the end with his defense. I mean, he is doing it all. And they turn it over. So 2.3 seconds left. So Haidar is going to come out. But not for the rest. It's so he can bring an extra shooter on the floor. That said, I think Haidar has been your best shooter in that. Especially from distance. Look at that. Oh. And Ali Shamoon hustles, tries to keep it in. That was... Not a bad play, just uh, overthrew as it is, just a little. Well, Australia just 10 minutes away from clinching a second consecutive FIBA Asia Cup title. They lead it 57-43. Yeah, an impressive performance from Australia. It was the, the damage was done early in this game. They outscored Lebanon only by four points in that quarter. They continue to shoot the ball well. But Lebanon have shown some cracks in that Australian team. They just haven't been able to be persistent enough and Australia are punishing when they've made mistakes. That's why it means Australia out with a 14 point lead now and it's a big ask. A low scoring game to overturn a 14 point deficit against a team that are as deep and as strong as this Australian team. Australia in this tournament. As again, they walloped Jordan in their first game, then beat Saudi Arabia. So they weren't really tested against those two teams. Indonesia actually gave them their best game in the group phase for about 15 minutes, and then uh, they just kind of blew the game open midway through the second quarter. And they beat Japan and New Zealand. New Zealand really gave them their toughest test in this tournament. Yeah, they really did. That was a. Uh 
another one of those great games that we've had within this tournament. And obviously, New Zealand winning the bronze medal as well earlier today. That's right. Could have two podium finishes, probably will, yeah. for the teams from down under. Yeah. But Australia has really set the tone. Matt McCarron really set the tone for this team and that starting five and Baker. I mean, really, those two guys. Alan Mazir being hounded by Proctor. He's got it back. And dribbles it off of his foot. And Lebanon are going to need a quick start to this quarter. They're going to need to get it down to single digits relatively early. Otherwise, you're going to feel that Australia are just going to start to time manage and really slow the game down. Parker is vague. He's open, so he takes it, but that's short. And a chance to run. It's going to be a, a rare layup for Mazir. And Australia takes back on defense. It's a 12 point game. Arledge back in the game. Some fresh legs. See if he can make an impact. He's the forgotten man, really, in this Lebanon team tonight. And the handoff goes through to McDaniel. And that could very easily have been taken by Lebanon. Back to Ezzedin, he goes up and draws the foul on Faye. Yeah, it's those little opportunities for Lebanon they need to capitalize on. It's a nice pass from Arakji, it's smart. He's going into a dead end. And there's the finish by Meza. And you see Boomer's just chasing back. Both McCarran and Faye giving everything to hustle back. As the Dean gets both to drop. But this isn't comfortable for Australia, you know. One big shot from Lebanon, and we're in a single digit game, and that becomes anyone's game, as we've seen so many times in this tournament already. Reese Vague again open, and this time drills it. Yeah, it's such a good shooter. Yeah, he really is. You know, it was a surprise to see him miss that first one. It was two of six from three point range. It sure doesn't seem like he's missed that many. As a Dean, here comes in. Back outside to Arlich. And they get it to the wrong man down low, and they're fortunate to have the basketball. I don't know who would win a three-point shooting contest. Could be Thon Maker in this Australia team. Ezzedine, long rebound for Lebanon. Oh, I think I'd go vague all day long on that yeah, one. Yeah, I think I would as well. And a set shot. Cool. Ezzedine, just blocked by Thon Maker. Here comes Proctor, gets it to Maker. And Orlich goes down and makes sure there's no layup. Foul is called, though. And look at Maker just chasing that down and staying with it. You're either one of those players that just goes after every shot or you're not, and Maker loves I think nothing more than the block shot. And it's probably just behind the dunk for Maker on favorite plays. Pender comes in for Vague. Pender is the most improved player in Australia this past season. In the NBL. Down White. Back in the game as well. Everybody plays for Australia. Oh, what a miss for Maker. Yeah, just one from five, Thumb Maker. 11, 11 re seems like he's had a bigger game than 11.6 rebounds and two assists. Does have the blocks. I think the dunks help pad it yeah. out mentally. It feels like a bigger performance, right? 
Oh, this is both. Could there be a final twist in the turn in the tail of this tournament? The poor free throw shooting performance hasn't cost Australia a game. Imagine if it cost them the final. Wow, that would be a, a story. Well, Arachi just made an incredible shot. Surrounded by green and gold jerseys. You look at the way he does that, you kind of think, how does he even find that lane, let alone get the shot away, let alone score? Arachi, 13 points, 7 rebounds, no, 15 points, 7 rebounds. And they get it to Maker! And he does indeed get his share of slams. Look at look at McCarron. He just doesn't give up on the basketball. It's another one for the collection for Maker. Yeah, if you made NFTs of uh, all the fun Maker dunks, you have uh, yeah, a fair few in your collection just from this tournament alone. Maker sits down. Maybe contender for MVP. Maybe McCarron's a contender for MVP in this tournament. Rakchi, contender for MVP. Yeah, there's, there's been plenty as well, hasn't there? When you look across the board, so many teams with some really superstar performances. Just looking at the, uh, you would think that the MVP would come from the final. I don't think there's any doubt it would be Rakchi if it were going to be uh, Lebanon. Here's Chuck Chan. Gosh, talk about forgotten men. Yeah. On who? Is that on Pinder? If it is, he's out of the game. So, yeah, sometimes that happens. You just get the, you get into foul trouble and once again, Pinder. Oh, well, yeah, he was yeah. hooking all its, that's pretty obvious. And that's just a really poor foul, even if you're not in foul trouble. But for that to be your fifth foul, completely unnecessary, away from the ball. Certainly plenty of lessons for Pinder to take from this final. I think the issue with Jock Chan in this game is the pace. I just yeah. don't think he can play at this pace. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. It's the pace and the pressure on the perimeter shooting. In other games, he's been able to find space and, and spot up. Against and catch the Philippines, and shoot. against New Zealand. You know, whereas in this game, it's not been the case. The other thing you've got is they've also got, you know, small forwards and, and, and Proctor with good wingspans. You know, against the Philippines, they have a size advantage, so he doesn't have Traveling. to shoot the ball as quickly. Traveling on this year. I, I, I think Lebanon are more competitive when Mansour is out there, but he hasn't gotten back up off the bench. I don't know why. Mansour's played 11 minutes. He's got a couple of steals. I guess he's not the scoring threat. But defensively, he's solid. And Darwin's back in. 15 point game, six and a half minutes to go. Can Australia just lower the boom and put this thing out of reach? Is it already out of reach? Proctor. No. Back. And then he is fouled. Two shots. That handle is unreal. Oh, we missed the best bit of the play on the replay. Oh, oh takes an elbow yeah. to the place. Yeah, he. They say foul, foul hard. He that deserves was definitely the, that. He deserves a strip to the line regardless. <laughs> you can see what Coach El Haj has done now with this this five on the floor. This is the team that can score points in a hurry. Every single player on the floor now can shoot the three ball. This is this is really baffling to me. Australia three of twelve from the line. Doesn't baffle me after this tournament. They've shot that shockingly. Is another, it is it is just incredible. A team of this <laughs> highly super skilled athletes can't shoot free throws. Yep, they've it's been shocking throughout. And the ball kicked. The game was almost off to the races.
One is Swanky in the game as well. Sam Froling, McDowell White, Proctor, and the Vanilla Gorilla. There he is. Reese Bay. Darwin over to Arachi. They tell him for that every time if they could. And that's exactly what Coach El has set their team up to do now. They've set them up to shoot the three ball. That's that's what this team offensively has to do. That's the only way they're going to get back into this game, if you ask me, to hit a hot run from outside. And the man who just missed two free throws has no problem answering with a three. Proctor has been so, so impressive in this tournament. It's only eight points, but four rebounds, two assists, and he's had some great games. Arakji. And just when you think Lebanon might have a chance to have a run, Australia snuffing out immediately. Rolling spins, turns, goes in, and denied by Haidar. Elise Shamoun into Haidar. El Darwich. And certainly having the last throw of the dice now, Lebanon. They're going to throw everything at it from downtown. He's going to get a timeout in the next dead ball. Down wide. Rakti. Wow. He keeps saying wow, he does it so often, you know. It is desperation time, and Rakti steps up and hits the three. And he's already three got eight four. points. He's four or five from three point range. He's eight points here in the fourth quarter, and that's what's needed. That's what he did in the semi final as well. He was quiet for most of the game and then stepped up. Froling gets in and he's fouled. He wanted the basket. Needs to calm down. Eldarwich needs to calm down. The last thing you're going to give away is a technical foul, although Australia will probably miss the free throw, so it wouldn't be as damaging <laughs> as maybe it could be. Froling has not attempted a free throw today. He is 29% in the tournament. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievably, not the worst boomer. What is the worst? According to the stats in front of me, it's McCarran, which is unreal. That's incredible. I want to check that. I'm at that short. Sure. Can't be right. Froling makes the first off the front of the rim. He's only been there five times. One from five. Okay. And it's only makes one of two and 350 remaining. It's now or never time for the Cedars. And Shreino Iraqi wants to get his opportunities. So they put McCarran on him. Chuck Chan. Over to Eli Shamoon. Good! Right at the end to make it a 10-point game. And this is their way back into this game. This is the way they get back into this game. Australia have dropped back into, well, four of their starting five, so they know the threat is here now. McCarran. Wani Swaka. Oh. Time after time after time, Australia have done that. It's so impressive, particularly as it's coming out of the hands of their youth players, their young development players. El Darwich for three, good! Well, at least they're having a good run at it. Back to a 10-point game. A couple of stops. That's it. That's what they need to blow this game open. Lebanon need a couple of stops. But do they have the, uh, the gas in the tank to play that style of defense? Australia taking seconds off the clock. McCarran. Look at that. Von Maker. He misses it, gets the rebound, and that says it all. And he tried to dunk it. Well, he's going to the line where he's one of six. The question is, can Lebanon rebound it if he does miss again? 
And that dunk was almost from the car park. Yeah, he was. <laughs> oh, that's a long way away that he's trying to throw that one down from. What must it be like to be like Fawn Maker, to be able to jump from outside the lane like you know, that? You know what it's without like? Without a running start. It's, it's like, like when you play on one of those mini rings. Yes, it is. That's exactly what it must be like to be Fawn Maker. In your house. <laughs> and this time he takes his time and makes the free throw. The crowd are actively involved in this game as well. They've been wonderful throughout this tournament. It's been a joy to be in Jakarta. Just one of two. Dow White. Fourth team foul in Australia. And you just feel like Lebanon have just got a sniff of being able to come away with the win here, don't you? The way they're playing the game, there seems to be an extra spring in their step at the moment as they, they close in and try and fight their way back in. But you got to play all 40 minutes. And... But you give up all those, all that time from your summer. You just want to play the game that you love to get better and better. Practice, travel. Okay, they're staying in a nice hotel. We got to be honest. They're in a nice place. They're enjoying their time in Jakarta. But at the end of the day, it's the trophy that's at stake here at the end. It makes it all worthwhile for one of these two teams. And right now, it looks like it'll be Australia unless Lebanon do something special. Hydar goes in and. Despite the attention of Brolin, scores just tremendous effort from Hydar. He has been unreal today. You know, you talk about veterans, we've done it repeatedly in this tournament, but he has just lifted himself to the occasion. And they have forced a turnover quickly to Eli Shamoun. He's just going to take the layup. Wow, and he's fouled as well. Unbelievable. <laughs> How about this? And you're right. The spring and the step, the shot from Hydar, and now Eli Shamoun. And sure enough, McCarran got him on the hand. Wow. 72 65. And on top of the spring and the step for Lebanon, I feel a little bit of nerves for Australia. You look at the body language now, they're not confident. The heads are slightly dipped, they're a little bit more. They're not confident they're coming away with gold and that's the first time in the entire tournament I think I can actually say that that they're not 100% sure well that they're leaving with the trophy now well we've seen them in this position against New Zealand and they've come down and hit big three-pointers we've seen Maker and then McDowell White hit a couple of big threes is that going to be what bails them out because if Lebanon get it back you like their chances of scoring here's McDowell White it's Reed Bay Hydar's got it. <laughs> One minute. Arachi, you know he's special in these moments. He wants isolation. He wants to do it on himself. He puts up a three. And he's fouled. Unbelievable. How do you foul him? Is he that good that you foul him from three-point range? No, absolutely not. You cannot foul. That's just poor decision-making. 
But, wow. that, but that's what the step oh, back does. Yeah. That's what the step back does. It lures the defender to have to overcommit their momentum forward. It, Always going to end up in contact. It is game on in Jakarta in the final minute. How did this happen? I don't know why we're surprised. It's happened every game of this Asia Cup. It's just been phenomenal. Just when you think you've got it all figured out, this FIBA Asia Cup hey, throws up a surprise. Right now, let's, go, uh, let's go back to yellows. You know, Australia let's have missed so many free throws tonight. Okay. Offensively, we take care of the ball and make free throws. We're in a good spot, okay? Uh, press offense to start, okay? Press offense to start. You're carrying it. We're going horns twist, okay? We've got shooters in the corners. All right, let's have Bob. Um, switch it with me. Switch it with you every time. Let's go. Uh, I still want you setting it. That's fine. Mark, you've been posing the question really for the last few games is will this free throw shooting catch up with Australia at some point? And it has put them in a position now where the game is not over in yeah. the final minute. Yeah, it absolutely has. It, you know, they've missed 12 free throws tonight. Five of 17. That's... Ha they are fortunate that it's not hurt them earlier in this tournament. You know, every game they've played, I've called it out, and it's not come back to, to hurt them. But maybe today that's the day where it does. And that's heartbreaking. You know, that's heartbreaking as a you, player yeah, you for, just don't for feel that like, to be the way you lose. Yeah, you don't feel like anybody deserves that, but it's part of the game. Yeah, a big part, an important part of the game. Ooh. Big miss. Speaking of missed free throws, big miss. While Arakji, he had been... He had missed one earlier. In fact, he had missed four himself now. And that's, now he's, yeah, that's huge because it's still a two possession game. If he'd made all three, it brings it back to a one possession game. That changes the dynamic now for well, Lebanon. Well, will Australia go inside to make it? Keep it out of the perimeter. Will Reese Vague attempt the three? Will it be McDowell White? McCarron gets in the paint. Back outside. McDowell White for three. Hydar rebounds the miss. They've got to go quick. They've got to go quick. They need two scores. They can't take their time. They can't take their time. Wilder actually has it guarded by Baker. He goes around and he puts it up in. That's Lebanon smart. Have pulled to within two. They've got to get it steal, but then again, don't forget, Australia struggling at the free throw line. They got a foul. They got a they foul. They got a foul in. They got they, a foul. Oh, they just sent Proc to that. Oh, boy, the 18 year old Duke University bound Tyrese Proctor. 0 oh, from 2 from the line tonight. Going to the free throw line. Oh, my goodness me. Talk about pressure. That's a smart play by Rachi. Everyone was expecting a three. He knew it didn't matter whether it was a two or three, so went to the bucket. That's a smart play. For anybody, yeah, for anybody down under that went to bed thinking this thing was over. If you know who they are, wake them up. There's still basketball to be played. And oh! Ice! Running in his veins at the right time. 18 years old, didn't even hesitate. Look at at that. the line to win a continental trophy, to win the Asia Cup. Unbelievable. Oh, he does it again. Oh. He didn't flinch. They only make them when they had to. Tell me he is not going to be one of the biggest names in Asian basketball in the future. Timeout Lebanon trailing by four, 8.7 seconds remains. Just when you think the free throws will catch up, they come up and make two big ones. Hey, 
Whichever way this game goes, Lebanon can hold their, hold their heads high. The they fact have that they given have us not... a phenomenal game. Yeah. It, you know, it just didn't <laughs> seem possible, did it? <laughs> no. It did not seem possible. And quite frankly, it's... I don't think the Australians can quite believe that it's happened, that it's this close. This can be a two or three from Lebanon. It just has to be quick. It doesn't matter what the score is, it has to be quick. Shamoon gets it. He's got to turn Iraqi for three. Go! Oh! Unbelievable! And they're going to call a timeout. Yeah, absolutely. They'll advance the ball. Wow. Unbelievable. Iraqi. Phenomenal. Wild Rachi! They just do not quit! Extraordinary player, extraordinary moment! He did it in the semi-final, he's doing it in points. the final. He's got 28 points! He's 5 of 6 from deep. 7 of 11 at the line. Only 13 points at the end of the third quarter, and he has scored 15 in this last quarter. Unbelievable. The atmosphere is absolutely wonderful. This is the send-off that this tournament deserves well, for me. Is. This is exactly the right game to finish this tournament with. It has been unbelievable, this tournament. And yes, Australia have been caught up in it in the last couple of games, including the final, as they tried to defend the title they won in Lebanon in 2017. Quick McCarran. foul now for Lebanon. Inbound quick foul, foul, quick foul, yeah. And they foul Reese Vague. Boy. Vague's first trip to the free throw line. Only shooting 33%. I don't think he's been there very often, though, in this tournament. Well, if he makes both. Yeah, just one from three. <laughs> oh. Nice. Even if he makes point game. Even if he makes both, Arachi can take this to overtime. And I would not be complaining for one second. Love this game. He does not. They've got to move They've it. Got They've got to, got to move it. It's Haidar. Haidar, he puts no. it up. It's off. And Haidar, he had more time. And Australia what? have held on. They just could not get the shot across midcourt. They couldn't get it across. Australia just survived. 75 73. Unbelievable. And I guess in, in some respects, this makes that title all the more special for Australia because they had to really grind out a win at the end. For me, it shows you the quality of basketball in Asia. This tournament that we've had, this pinnacle, the climax, is exactly what this tournament has been about from the first day, all the way through, 36 games now, and it's just delivered world-class basketball. It's been a joy. Well, yeah, and you look at the smiles on the faces of the Lebanon players and the coach, I think you're just glad that they did themselves justice with that finish. But at the end of the day, a win is a win for Australia. They remain the kings of Asia with a second consecutive title at the FIBA Asia Cup. But it's great to see Lebanon just plug away and make this a game in the end. Yeah, and it's the way it should have been. You know, Lebanon, I said it at the, throughout the tournament, they seem to be the best team. The way they've stuck together, they've been a unit throughout this tournament. Australia are favourites coming into the tournament. It's the final that we all wanted, and it just lived up to every ounce of hype that we've given it. It's huge respect for the 24 players on the floor. Just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Well, you only get so many chances to win a title, and while Arakji, he had the tournament of his life.
Yeah, I mean, he you truly never know. did. He could end up being the MVP. I don't know. You know, he's in tears right now, understandably so. He's given everything. You know, his team are holding him up. What a player. Well, Araji has been in this tournament. It's been a joy to watch him play. It's been an honor to see just exactly how good he is. But all the credit for Australia as Tom Maker is going to come and pick up his TCL Player of the Game award now. And Thon Maker has entertained us in every game, none more so than maybe the final. It was just an absolute barrage of dunks in that game from Thon Maker. But what a game. Both these teams deserve to be in the final. You have to say, based on the entire 40 minute performance, Australia do deserve to be crowned Asia Cup champions. They just were, you know, they've been phenomenal. They really have. They have been good, and Thon Maker has been named the TCO player of the game. And I think more than anything, just the intensity that he plays with. It's probably going to be him or McCarran, and in the end, it was Maker. And YL Arakti was just sensational. So just pleased for him. Yeah, and you look at some of the stats of this Australia squad, it's not really, you know, to pick apart a game like this. You don't necessarily want to do it, but Thon Maker ended up with 14 points, eight rebounds, three assists, three blocked shots. Tell me a better stat line than that in a final. That's one that he's going to remember for a long time, but you also have to look to Mitch McCarran as well, playing a true captain's role. Played 31 minutes today, ended up with 12 points, five assists, four rebounds. A phenomenal job Australia have done, and they deservedly will come away with the win. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, you do go back as you look at Maker, and the one <laughs> chink in his armor tonight was the free throw shooting, and it contributed to a harrowing finish <laughs> for Australia. You know, they shot it 38.1%, 8 of 21. Maker was two of eight, and good job. Yeah, it was. Uh, he certainly was the free throw shooting throughout this tournament. That was just the well. Let's be honest. The only Achilles heel, the only weakness within this entire Australian roster was that free throw shooting. It almost came back to cost them the biggest prize. But look at this shot, but are actually to make it a oh. one point game. I mean, you're just speechless, really. You what are. You but I like the pass as well. You yeah. have to give credit to Shamu. It would have been easy just to try and swing around and jack your shot away. He was calm. He read the situation. They left Arachi open and wow. What it's an end to this game. It's a shame in a way that they could fashion a better potential final shot. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, Ali Haidar took it. Oftentimes the, the most inspirational player in the game for me was Haidar, the way he came out and yeah, did everything agreed. tonight. So anyway, we're going to give the uh, All-Star 5 awards. And it's great. This is always uh, difficult when they give these awards because there's so many deserving players. But they have chosen the five. And so Mr. Haman Yang, the FIBA president from Mali. So while Rakji from Lebanon has made it. So they will receive the medals and then walk to the center of the floor where President Niang is. Yeah, and Arakji averaging 25 and a half points a game. Yeah. What just, more do you say? just a spectacular. Yeah. 25 and a half points per oh. game. Not just 25, it's Not an easy 25 and a half points. Hey, jump on my back and I will do amazing things for you 25 points yeah. per game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he led the way. You don't like in a team sport like this to, to put too much credit on one player, but you have to say he led them to the final. Mitch McCarran, very deserving.
Yeah, he ended it's up. It's great with, to see him in there. Yeah, eight Mitch points, McCarran. four rebounds, 5.6 assists a game. Just a true uh, just vision a of a captain. Yeah, yeah, captain, but so much, uh, so much heart, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's an inspirational leader. But what he did was, when he could, he let the young guys gain their experience when they needed him. He stepped in and produced big numbers. Well, you have to say, Toy Smith Milner's inclusion a lot, I think, was because of today. He spirited them to the uh, to third place with yeah. that incredible performance. Yeah, again, like McCarron, he's let some of the young guys take, you know, the big shots, take some of the focus in the early games. But when it stepped up, it was absolutely vital. He ended up with nearly 10 points a game, six rebounds a game. But like you say, it was all about that bronze medal match performance for Smith Milner. Tom Maker, also from Australia, making it. And uh, again, he only does things the spectacular way. Yeah, huge tournament every single game. You know, you could have had the, the game highlight reel just pretty much being Thon Maker throwing the ball, stepping out, great handle. He ends up with almost 18 points, nine rebounds a game. He is just a stats machine. Thon box score maker. Uh, definitely deserves to be in that all-star five. And Joe Chi, who after coming back from COVID was probably the most dominant player in that game for China uh, when they went out. Yeah, I don't think China would have got anywhere near as far as they did if Zochi hadn't come back. You know, yeah. the impact he has, the way he plays the game, he is a, you know, a wonderful modern style center. He has such great footwork, such great hands, um, and really contributed 15 points and almost 13 rebounds a game. That is uh, a very impressive all-star five, to say the least. But again, it's never a perfect five, is it? You've always oh, got others that could make it. It could be an all-star 15 and 20 in this tournament. There's been so many great players, so many big performances. It's, uh, yeah, it's been... But that, that being said, I'm extremely happy for all of those guys. Oh, yeah. And now the most valuable, most valuable player, the TC, the TSO MVP, Award will be presented by Mr. Hanro Kasuma, the brand executive, Time International, official retailer of Tiso Indonesia. And as much of the players say they're not focused on individual awards, this MVP of a tournament, it does matter. It is a nice thing to look back on at the end of your career. So the MVP is... Well, well, You could have made a case, I think, for him or for the two Australians. But yeah, yeah. Lebanon are nowhere near maybe the quarterfinals without Wael Arachi. Yeah, and the MVP chance now going around the arena. That's a, a lovely way for Wael to leave the tournament. I think it's absolutely warranted. You yeah. know, for the teams that got to the, the business end, he was the real focal point. You know, I think Thumbmaker would have probably just been behind him for me. I think he's absolutely warranted this award for just how much he's put into this tournament. It's, yeah, phenomenal performances, game after game after game. He was the one lock for the All-Star Five, for my yeah. opinion, yeah, coming agree. into tonight. So I, I think agree. that kind of yeah, I agree. probably justifies that one. Third place awards will be handed out by Miss Amanda Jenkins, the executive director of FIBA Regional Office, Oceana. So that's coming up. Yeah, they've just got to wait for Smith Milner to make his way back to his team with his uh, All-Star 5 award. That's great to see as well as Wael Arachi heads back off the baseline, congratulated by all the New Zealand players for being MVP of the tournament. So, so New Zealand make it. And so Smith Milner will lead them out as the captain. 
Yeah, we've talked about Smith Milner. He's had a, a great tournament. He's been uh, very impressive. Taylor Britt comes out. Taylor Britt did Sam a great job as that backup guy. The name's Sam Meninga, but he's not here, so that's why. And Max Darling. That's Max Darling, yeah. they'll get their medals. And the thing that excites me is they announced this, this New Zealand roster, how much future potential lies within these 12 players. You know, Smith Milner, the oldest player in the team, and he's just 26 years old. We could see this exact 12 at another two Asia Cups. That's how exciting this is, and to think where these players are going to go. The likes of Flynn Cameron, he has an exceptionally bright future ahead of him. I wouldn't bet against him picking up an Asia Cup MVP award at some point in his career. Do you like how uh, Tony Smith Milner is waiting back to congratulate all of them before, yep. they, before they go up to the podium? There's your captain. There's the captain. That yeah. is your captain. And there goes Peru Cameron, the FIBA Hall of Famer. Getting it in his first Asian Cup as the head coach, the FIBA Asia Cup, getting to the podium. So great honor for him. Wonderful achievement for the Tall Blacks. Look at, look at, uh, Tucky's oh, enjoying himself, right? Tucky is indeed. <laughs> it was not a low-key celebration for there's, him. There's always that kid in the family portrait who has to pull the face, right? I think we found it in the New Zealand roster. Has to enjoy himself a bit too much. <laughs> So the second place, Mr. Hagop Kajirian, the executive director of FIBA Regional Office Asia, will greet uh, Lebanon, who reached the final and pushed Australia right to the end. We thought, we thought they would push them. They did push them. We just didn't think it would happen the way it happened. I Although I think you did suggest that the missed free throws could ultimately cost Australia. Yeah, and it, I was almost completely banned from entering Australia in the future if that forecast had come right. But uh, yeah, it's, it's so much credit to Lebanon. You know, to make a great final takes two teams. And Lebanon stepped up to the plate. They could have, after that opening phase from Australia, they could have buckled and just cruised their way to a silver medal. That was not what Lebanon were going to do. You know, their chance to win that gold medal, that's too much for any team to step away from. And you look at these players as Haidar steps up onto the podium as well. Just such big performances across this tournament. Different players stepping up in different games. Haidar coming back from COVID to put in a huge performance in the final today. Probably. Just other than, I mean, Arakji was such that he was so heroic that it's almost doesn't seem possible that I can say this, but the performance that Ali Haidar put in today was quite simply maybe the most heroic performance it, of this it, FIBA Asia Yeah, Cup. it felt almost supernatural. He just didn't stop. You I, know, he clearly was, was exhausted. Inspired. It made me want to come back and start playing basketball watching him play today. Yeah, well. you yeah, know, I get the feel. I understand. You know, you saw how much he put into it, and they can be very, very proud heading back to Lebanon, silver medalist in this tournament. See the cedar in the Lebanese flag, and they gave uh, this tournament some great moments. They looked like they were going to get run out of the gym today against Australia and aided by some missed free throws, as we've talked about. and proof that basketball is a 40-minute game. They continued to play. They stayed in it to the last second. I have and nothing but respect for every single member of that Lebanese roster. You know, Warriors from first to last. And yeah, just so, so impressive. They're the epitome of international basketball trying to step up. So Joining the presentation for the champions, Australia will be Mr. Zaydudin Amali, the Minister of Youth Sports here in Indonesia, and Mr. Eric Tahir, the FIBA Central Board member.
Of course, Indonesia will be one of the three host cities, or excuse me, Jakarta, one of the three host cities for the FIBA Basketball World Cup next year. And, and I'm a national team, and if you have a choice, you put your hand up to come here because it's a fantastic place. And if I'm a fan, I tell you now, yeah. from first-hand experience, you book want... your tickets. Yeah, Come here. If your team gets drawn in in yeah. Jakarta, this will be one of the best experiences you have. Jakarta has been an unbelievable city hosting this. The people... You will not meet more welcoming, friendly, helpful people in the world. It's just an amazing city. Mr. McCarran, the captain coming out. Alex Dukas, Tyrese Proctor, Juan Swaka, Ton Maker. Ton Maker. I'm really happy for Mitch McCarran making that All-Star 5. Two-time FIBA Asia Cup winner. Leader. Uh, this guy does it the right way. I'm really happy. For all of them, though, they all buy in, they all play. Yep. He sets the tone. Mitch McCarron sets the tone. This is who we are, this is how we're going to play. And you see him ask every other player to play at that level, and they step up in every game they've stepped up. You know, we questioned would they survive when they're challenged. We've seen it in the semi final against New Zealand. We definitely saw it in the final against Lebanon. This is a tough team. You know, they came over, they overcame that adversity as we see. Clint Steindl yeah. come to the, the podium and he hasn't stopped, you know, supporting his team, only featured in the first two games, but he's still been there. That team ethos has not disappeared, Absolutely. it's not dissipated, it's yeah, it's wonderful champions. It's wonderful. great to see Mike Kelly, I mean, this guy's a great coach. I mean, first first time as the, as the coach of the Boomers, all he does is lead him to an Asian title and he's, think, he's thinking if... We're going to have some free throw shoot practice <laughs> in future tournaments that I'm involved in this Boomers team. So we could be a little more decisive. But now, the national anthem of Australia. is to represent your country internationally and that just kind of underlines how special this moment is and, now, and especially so what Mitch McCarron is now going to be able to do as the captain uh, Sheikh Saad Ben Ali Al Tani the president of the FIBA regional office Asia is going to present the FIBA Asia Cup trophy and this is what every little boy and the little, every little girl around the world dreams of, lifting a trophy for your country. So well done, Mitch. Well done, Australia. So let's watch the celebration. They've rehearsed this, no doubt. So they've been in two FIBA Asia Cups and Australia have won the FIBA Asia Cup on both occasions. Winning against this time, Lebanon going undefeated in the tournament. Probably not quite as straightforward as 2017 when they really did kind of bowl over the competition in Lebanon, yet, you know, maybe, does that say something about Asian basketball? Yeah, the level is going up, that's for sure. Saw some great, great performances from them, from so many teams. Some great coaching performances. You know, the strength of this Australia team is that they, they had depth. Yeah, they fully. And, and also, they, they play the game 
just with such, I don't want to say anger, but aggression and quickness. It's just and intensity. The intensity just, is unrivaled. Yeah, it really no, is. Nobody can match it for probably the majority of the game. Particularly on the defensive end. There's no other team in this tournament that played defense the way that Australia played defense in this tournament. It has been relentless. It's an onslaught for 40 minutes. And from that, they build their offense. From that, they ignite. And Thon Maker is usually the lucky recipient when they do ignite and get out on the break. But like you said, just a team performance. And look at the smile on Mitch McCarron's face holding that trophy. I don't think he could have been happier there. So just uh, overall, terrific. Uh, it makes it all worthwhile coming here. Again, you know what? They really looked after Australia while they were here. These guys took care of business when they were on the court. They had a great time off of it. You know, you can see the teams that have the players that are really together, and this is Australia. Yeah, absolutely. The team spirit in that team, the unity, the one vision. You know, that, that one drive, this is how we're going to play basketball. We're going out to win. It was there from the opening tip to the final buzzer. A little bit shaky against Lebanon, but absolutely phenomenal. You know, Australia deserve to be Asia Cup 2022 champions. What a tournament and what a final. So after all that, we're going to look back at the best plays of the second half. And uh, obviously the MVP of the tournament, YL, Arachi figures in that. Remember, he had, as you quite rightly pointed out, I can't take credit for this. He's like, Jeff, he scored, he's, he had 13 points through the first three quarters. Look at the numbers. He's got, 15, unreal. He's got 15 in the fourth quarter and, you know, helped bring his team back as Australia, as well as they played, just left the, the game open at the free throw line primarily. And uh, it just goes to show you just have to keep plugging away if you're an opponent of Australia. If you keep playing, you keep trying to figure out a way. Um, finally, uh, I, I felt like Jab was, was, did a great job with Lebanon. And listen, this is his first FIBA Asia Cup as a head coach as well. And he almost got to the top of the podium. He's 33 years old. In coaching years, that is merely an infant. That's right. It's, it, it, it's just unreal for him to bring this team together and like I said such a strong team this wasn't you know we're gonna rave and rightfully so about Arakji's performance but it wasn't Arakji that got them here it was team that yeah. got them here it was every single player coming on and knowing their role knowing what their strengths were coming together looking after each other standing together strong that brought you know Lebanon to this point to the silver medal it's so much respect for Lebanese basketball, so much respect for these 12 players, the coaching staff, the support staff. They can walk away, they can get back on that plane with their heads held high. It's been phenomenal. It really has. Terrific effort by them, by Australia. I think we probably should say something about Jordan, how they really overcame adversity and almost almost got into the final. They pushed Lebanon to the very limit, and then New Zealand beat them in the third place game. They had a terrific FIBA Asia Cup and gave us some lasting memories. That was the last shot by Ali Haidar. But yeah, congratulations to Australia. Congratulations to so many players. Uh, you know, we look back and we just hope that those players also that got injuries like Steindl, like El Dwyri, that they come back strong because uh, they gave it all for their countries here and uh, really, a huge thank you to them for making this a special tournament, but this is a familiar sight, Australia, just incredible competitors. And again, you see Mitch McCarron getting the reward uh, for his leadership and all the dedication and commitment to the, he's, that he's had over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one final thing for me is everyone involved with this event, front to back, has done yeah. an amazing job. You know, the local organizing committee and all the staff involved have truly been yeah. phenomenal at delivering this event. The World Cup next year here will be an unbelievable experience. It, yeah, it's been a joy to be a part of, a small part of this event, and uh, I'll certainly personally take so many big memories throughout. Well, Australia came, and they almost marched to the title level.